Hey Jens, how are you doing? It's been a while, but I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back everyone who has been a returning viewer and subscriber. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you hit that subscribe button if you like what you see here and uh, return for future videos. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm Gerald, Ginger Gerald Stitcher, and I hope you like what you see. It's been a I think a couple weeks since I filmed last. I know I've been trying to be consistent, but I kind of just fell off the wagon. Not kind of. I've fallen off the consistency wagon for all of my uh, resolutions for the year for the last couple weeks because I just haven't felt like it. And I think that's all right. Um, life and work and... Things have just gotten in the way, and I just haven't felt like doing much. And I've been taking time for myself and to do what I need to do to get through things. So, anyways, I'm back today. I have lots to show you. I thought I'd start off by featuring one of my newer, it's not my newest, but it's one of my newer plants that has typically been known as a rarer plant, but I bought this, I don't know, a few months ago, maybe November, fall-ish. It, it's been since I lived in this house, so it's been since October, but it is an, a Syngonium albo, which is considered a variegated Syngonium. I have it on a moss pole, which I learned how to do bought from the Sydney Plant Guy on YouTube. And often these plants can have been known to range in the $60 to $100 range, but I was able to snag this one for, I think, less than $20. And so I'm excited to see that this plant is becoming more, what's the word? cost effective and available. When I purchased this, it was only one plant in the greenhouse. I don't know if they had more at the time, but I was able to snag it for a good value. As you can see, it is a vining, sing well, all of Syngoniums are vining, but this one doesn't really bush much. It just starts the vine right away. Whereas the other Syngoniums will tend to bush before they, they vine from my experience. And this one started off a little bit less variegated. And then I'm getting a lot more variegation towards the top. So when I bought this plant, I think it was maybe to here. And uh, maybe even higher. Maybe it was like this. All of these top two or three leaves for two or yeah, two or three leaves I have have had grow. I can't speak. The top, I want to say, three leaves grew under my care. So this one opened, I think, right after I bought it, and then I have these two leaves came out after that, and I'm starting to get a new leaf as you can see right here barely so which is really exciting so there we go i have it just it's not really actually attached to, it's not attached to the moss pool yet i haven't really been watering the moss pool like the sydney plant guy suggests i don't really have a way to do that yet in this home i'm hoping oh there's a spider hello spider i guess i gotta take care of you There he is. So I will take care of that after this video. The joys of uh, owning plants in a house. So there we go. Albo Syngonium, Syngonium Albo. I have other, so this is, there is a, um, if you research Syngoniums online, there are, there's the trifecta of rare Syngoniums that they suggest uh, that if you are a Sigonium person that 
every Syngonium person should buy. I own two of the three. I own the two white ones, and then there's also a red variegated. So there's the three variegated um, rarer Syngoniums. So there we go. Syngonium Albo. Hmm. Interesting that you're right there. I always like seeing uh, insects on my plants. Not that I want them in my house, but at least I know that it's a healthy habitat. All right, so I have been doing a lot of crafting in these last couple weeks, a lot of fixing my crafting because my knitting, I've been doing a lot of repair work on the crafting that I've been doing. So, uno momento, I forgot my book. Okay, so my knitting. Scoot up. I am knitting a sock out of the 52 weeks of socks. I got this for Christmas off of Amazon. I'm sure you can buy it in anywhere you can buy knitting stuff. And I am knitting the sock. Garia or Garia. There's the name, it's number 40 in the book. That's what it looks like. I am using a yarn.com yarn that I bought uh, from Stash years and years ago. And I don't even know what the name of it is or the color. It's a fingering weight sock yarn. And here is my progress. And actually, the progress keeper on here is a uh, purchase. And I don't have the information, but I will have to get that for you guys next time. So there is my progress. This is a sock that you knit inside out, and then you turn it around whenever you're ready to, uh, whenever you cast off. So since you last saw it, I was, last, last you saw it, I only had the foot done. Then I think shortly after, I don't even remember when last, then I, last time I picked, or when I picked it up, I had to do the heel. I think that was last Saturday I did the heel. It took me all day to do the heel because I had to do it inside out. It's a new technique for me. It's German short rows, which I do all the time, but it's German short rows inside out. And so I had to pull it out five different times. To get it right. Finally, I got it right and uh, I'm happy with it. It's not perfect, I don't think, but it's good enough for my very first time. You never get things right. You don't always get things right on the first time. And then I went ahead and did the body of this or the, the leg of the sock. I'm now, I, I did start to do the, the decorative cuff and I couldn't really figure it out. But I don't know if it's just because my brain wasn't working that day or what. So I, I'm ready to go ahead and do the wheat spikelets at the top and then do the ribbing and cast off. So one sock almost done. That is my 52 weeks of sock cast on. Not cast on, it's been cast on. Then... My other uh, knitting project that I've been working on, I have a bunch of stuff on the go, but is my sweater that I'm doing called the, I'm doing the Rift sweater by, I believe it's Jared Flood. Yep, Jared Flood. That's what it looks like when it's done. It's a knit in the round from the bottom up. I'm using two cones of coast, uh, coast yarn from Holst Garn. 
Holst, H-O-L-S-T-G-A-R-N. They are a company in Europe, I think the Netherlands, maybe Denmark, one of those two countries. And I have two of these. Coast, the Coast uh, yarn is a cotton wool blend. And this is called, this color is called Aconite, A-C-O-N-I-T-E. I bought this on uh, clearance three, four years ago. And uh, I'm using it finally. I did use it once and then I didn't like the sweater so I pulled it out and now I'm reusing it. So this is another one that I had to pull out. I did some uh, stitching yesterday and then I didn't read the pattern right and had to pull out two rows and redo it. But we're back on track. So here is my progress. I'm now ready to separate for the back and the front. So here is the body. It has a really nice under the arm, has a uh, ribbing going up the side. And then there is, it separates as you go up for, uh, to do that decorative ribbing at the top for the shoulders, shoulders and the arms. So there we go. That's where I'm at. Slow but steady progress. Kind of matches, but not really. You can tell that's my favorite color. So working up, I've learned some new techniques on this, which is nice. And um, hoping to get this done this year. Because I, I have another sweater that I really want to get going. I need to buy yarn for that one though. And I'm trying to use up stuff that I have in stash first. I even, uh, because I found a, another scarf, I think, like shawl scarf that I want to do that's in my uh, stash or that's in my favorites thing on Ravelry that I found a skein of yarn upstairs that I went ahead and caked up for that pattern as well. So I'm hoping to get that on the needles as well. I also have that other lace scarf on the go. So I have lots of uh, knitting going on. So there we go. Last time I talked with all of you, it was a live video. And that live video was a conversation with what I was going to start from the Riolis and from my kits. It, I know it was three Riolis and I want to say Panna, but I don't think it was Panna because I don't think I have any Pannas. But I went ahead and started the Riolis meerkats. I was going to say prairie dogs, but they're not prairie dogs. They're meerkats. This is kit number 1761. I think I bought this on Amazon. I might have bought this from Witchell. It was either Witchell or Amazon. And I've made some decent progress. I stitched on this for two or three days. This uses the wool acrylic flosses that comes in the kit. I'm also stitching this on the 14 count white Ada that comes in the kit. And here is the progress so far. So I started in the middle. I started right about here, which was this black right here, which was the middle. And then I came over and I've just been trying to work colors within a section. And that is this guy's body. So all of this tall dude's body right here is the uh, what is done so far. I am liking this. I, I, I really... Riolis kits are one of those palette cleansers that are just a lot of fun to work on for me. 
and I, it's nice and easy to follow. It's enjoyable to stitch. It's a nice change on working on the 14 count versus a 40 or a 46 count. And it's so it's a 14 count Ada, two strands of the floss over one uh, uh, X of the uh, fabric. And there are lots of blends. So there might, there, sometimes you might just, you might be able to do the loops, uh, loop start because it's just one color of the floss. Sometimes you might have to do two, two different colors and you have to uh, start it a different way. Here's my back, just so you can see what my back looks like. I will carry threads. So there we go. That is the Riolis Meerkats. I did also, I'm going to clean up while we're at it. Just so we are, I'm staying consistent and clean here. The big thing I've been working on this go round this month so far wasn't intending for it to be a major focus this month but it just kind of ended up being because i i've really fallen back in love with it is my heaven and earth design this is harbor lights by john bradley right yeah john bradley I looked, I've looked a couple times on, on Heaven and Earth Design. This is no longer available. I purchased this years ago. And I believe I started this back, it was my New Year New Start, January 1st, 2021. And I'm stitching this on 28 count Lugana, white Lugana, one strand of floss one strand of the called for dmc over two strands or i'm sorry one over one 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 strand of dmc over one x on one you know one strand of the fabric full cross i do everything full cross unless the unless the pattern specifically calls for a half stitch uh, i don't do 10 stitch and i probably put 5,000 stitches in this. I don't know. I don't keep track. I, I will, I do use Pattern Keeper and I do try to do five to 700 stitches a day. On a weekend day, I might get a thousand stitches, but I don't, there's no goals or anything. And hold on a second. Let me just put my needle to the back. Here is where I am so far. Again, 28 count, since I'm doing Pattern Keeper, since I'm doing Pattern Keeper, I'm, I'm going all over the place. So I've been picking colors that are up here in the tower's dome. And then wherever it is, it, I'm trying to fill in this area down here first because I want to get this these pages done first. But then as they fill in down here, then I move over into the sky this way. So I'm really trying to focus on coming down first because as I finish this section here, I will be able to move my large frame adapter across. These stitches right here are halfway down the entire length of the pattern. So the pattern is four pages tall and eight pages wide, I believe is what it is. But this is halfway down. So much different than from, it's a much different working experience for me than whenever I stitched Henry, my, my first Heaven and Earth design. Henry also had a lot of, here's Henry, there he is. 
It's also a lot more Henry had a lot more sections of blockiness of, of full block sections, except for his tunic, which was just full on confetti, which drove me nuts. This one has a lot more sections of mixed colors that are not true confetti, but also not full blocks of color. So it's, it's a very different experience for me working on this. I also want to say that compared to the, pic the picture and the artwork, the coloring in the design is a lot darker than I anticipated. Like this, these colors up in here are a lot darker than I thought they were going to be in the artwork. So I'm hoping as we progress here, it's going to lighten up a lot and we'll see. I do believe that right under here is the first building that I'm going to see. And then over here, so here is the first building on this side. And then right here is another building. So I'm really starting to get into the building sections, but I'm still right now, I'm still doing a lot of sky. So that is my heaven and earth design. I thought I would show you while I'm at it, how I, the way I've been stitching, because there's only, oh, there's 86 colors in this one. Henry had, I think, 91 or 92. How I organize Henry's flosses versus, I keep all of my flosses in, all of my DMC in a two-sided DMC, or in a two-sided floss, floss bobbin organizer. However, my heaven and earth design, I keep separate. So this is how I keep my, my flosses for Henry, or not for Henry, for Harbor Lights. All of them are separate. So this is a completely separate set of DMC from my, my main DMC. So I have a duplicate set for just the heaven and earth design. I don't have a full duplicate set of all 400 whatever DMC. It's just the ones that I need for the Hades. And then I also have a Snag Nabbit because I noticed that whenever I stitch on Hades, I tend to need to use a Snag Nabbit a lot more frequently than any other design I do. I also have a bag with, I have enough floss for my entire heaven and earth design. So I won't have to go out and buy floss to replace it. So once one of these gets fully used up, I have a bag of the remaining floss, to then just be able to bobbinate up and put it back in. So I do not have to worry about color discrepancies or anything like that within a certain color so that way my heaven and earth design if you know it takes me 10 years to finish i have enough flosses and i can keep that separate from my main dmc collection so i hope that helps if you're interested in uh, how i store and organize my dmc for the heaven and earth design so again yeah this is just these are the colors for it's kind of a muted, not kind of, it is a more muted color palette, except for those bright greens and yellows. So yeah, it fits well into my color scheme. So there we go. That is everything I have for you today. I hope you have a great uh, day or a week or whatever until I see you again. As always, keep enjoying the things that you do crafting gardening i'm looking forward to the weather is kind of uh, roller coaster like here lately it's warm in the weeks and cold on the weekends but i'm starting to really get into planning how i'm going to be designing and organizing my flower beds this year not that i have any 
organized plan yet, but just what kind of flowers I want to put in them this year and thinking about what my yard's going to look like, which is really exciting because I've never had a, I, well, I have had a yard in the past, but it's been quite a number of years since I've been able to work in a yard. So really looking forward to that. So I hope you all have a wonderful uh, period until I see you again. And as always, don't forget to always be creative.